very good, buddy. All very good. Um, so, um, how's Westwood Ho looking at the moment? Well, it's a little bit quiet, I'll be honest. We, we have a, like a Facebook What's On page, and there hasn't been much on that lately. It's I, pretty quiet. Yeah, I can imagine. And and and, and we were talking off air about uh, your businesses uh, in general. I mean, uh, any light on the horizon for those? Um, well, we, we've got um, a, a little bit of light on the horizon. But we've got some um, uh, five bars, a couple of restaurants in the Holiday Park, but the um, they're all closed at the moment. We've got a, about 125 people on furlough, and um, we're actually just five of us working um, at the moment, just sort of painting and cutting grass and keeping it sort of tidy. Yeah. But there is a little bit of light today. Actually, I did read that perhaps this month they might be opening up bars with outside areas, so beer gardens and things like that might be allowed, but not inside. So we've just we've just been racking our brains this morning to see how we can get around that, which I think the Westwood Hay won't be a problem. I think that the waterfront and the fairway boy will be okay. Yeah. Um, they haven't locked outside areas, but the rest of it might be a bit tricky. And I'm guessing, I'm, I'm guessing with a, a couple of your establishments, like weddings are a big thing. How's that, what's the, what's the future for those, do you reckon? Yeah, that's been very tricky. Um, obviously with um, the fairway, there's been quite a lot of the staff. So my wife, I think he's taken on the wedding. Right. Um, I had quite a few um, sort of tears on the phone from the brides because obviously they, they booked weddings in um, July, uh, June, um, some in September. Um, so they've all, they, those have been cancelled. Um, the, 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 the next issue with the weddings is that if they do go ahead sort of end of September perhaps, if the two metre rule is still in place, mm. um, if they've all, you know, if they've got like 120 people coming to the wedding, then, then that can't happen either because you can't put a two metre rule between the tables or between the guests. Or, yeah. You know, it's, it is a bit of a, a bit of a, a liar wake to look at the ceiling and, and uh, cry. Yeah, moment. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. My, um, Rob, we are sounding a little bit muffled at the moment. Um, oh, sorry. I'm... So I don't know if, if, if we can improve that a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I've got. Oh, this is like. Oh, that's better. That's lovely. Yes, that's much nicer. That's much nice. Oh, we we can hear you properly now, so that's good. Um, now listen. Different climate than Westwood. It's a different climate. That's what it is. Now listen, listen. What what before we go and talk about the main reason we're going to have a chat? Um, what's this about a name change for you then? Oh, yes, on the telly. I'm not too sure. I wasn't stitched up there. Actually, we we had an interview on Spotlight the other night, yeah. and they changed my name from, from Rob Braddock to Rob Bradfield. But I don't know if my good friend at school, Simon Morris, was a little bit behind that, and he had a word with the interviewer and changed my name. <laughs> I'm not sure. He, he can keep a fairly good poker face, and yeah. he, uh, he didn't sort of give anything away. But I'm not sure yet. we we'll find out soon. <laughs> Love it. Now, Rob, um, why were you on the telly then? Tell us about it. Tell us about this, the lifeboat. Okay, right, okay. Well, what it was, I had a, um, a little chat with a gentleman called John Vistua about eight months ago, who's a lifeboat enthusiast. Yeah. Um, used to live in Appledore, and he's um, been looking at all the old boats that used to come out of Appledore, um, and he'd hunted down one called the Jane Hannah MacDonald III, which was actually in France, and he'd been in a yard in France for about 20 years. Yeah. So he, um, he particularly liked the story behind this boat. Um, obviously, it, it was um, launched in Biddeford, and then it ended up for 12 years in Appledore, um, from 1910 to 1922, yeah. and it saved like 13 rights for local people. But it also had a little bit of history about going to Dunkirk in 1940, where it was taken over there to, to rescue the soldiers, and um, it did rescue a few, but on the way back, it actually sank. Oh. But it only sank uh, down to sort of the cork, which would keep it afloat, so yeah. they had to take the soldiers out, and then they... Then they cut it free and it drifted off in the channel, which it was re re um, recovered two days later and brought back to Norfolk. Um, so it had a, a, a nice little twist with all of it. And I, I, I like the story. So he had a word with me and wanted to know if I'd be interested in perhaps bringing it back to um, uh, Appledore or Bidford or whichever, just, yeah. just bringing it back home, um, which I, I got quite excited about. The story was quite interesting. Um, which I liked very much, so I um, I thought about it a little bit, and I thought I, I, I like the idea, but I'd like to bring some other friends, perhaps who love sort of Appledore very much. So I got mm. my two two school friends involved, Simon Morris and his older brother Jamie yeah. Morris, who live in Appledore, and um, I wanted to know if they'd like to go perhaps thirds on paying for it and then bringing it home and putting it back eventually, perhaps in Appledore. Brilliant. So is is, is that the plan to to actually get it up and running again? It is, yes. Well, it's back now. We, we brought it back last Wednesday, um, and we put it into a store in Biddeford, and it's up there now, and we're just going to cover it over for the next, uh, next, next few weeks or so until we come up with a plan of um, 
you know, talking about refurbishing it or getting grants for it or uh, there's um, sort of Dunkirk little ship grants out there. There's uh, all sorts of things to do with maritime history. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I, and I think it'd be lovely to bring it back because it really is a beauty. And, and do you think it would, be, it would be brought back to a, a stage where people could actually have trips on it or is it just there to, to look at? Um, the more um, I'm hearing about it, actually, it's probably more to look at than us going it. I think once you start refurbishing these things and putting them back in the water, I think it does open up a new kind of worms with, uh-huh. with more refurbishment. So I think it's probably more than likely, I mean, this isn't by any means final, but it, it'll be more like perhaps put on the key at Apple Door or put somewhere on Apple Door. Oh, and, wow. it, and then just someone to look at it. But it, is, it is amazing to think that um, this was just a rowboat with yeah. 10 people on it that used to row over the bar. And you know, to rescue people, it's, it's incredible. They're so brave. Yeah, that's but awesome. We must bring it back. And what a lovely time of year to bring it back as well. I, it was a great day. Yeah, it was nice. It, it's good. It, it, um, it, it took several hours to get back from France, which is interesting. I thought maybe you might have been quarantined for two weeks. You might not be here for a while. <laughs> but he, he got through it, okay? Yeah. And, he, and he's here, and it's, and it's looking, you know, it, it's got all the makings of it. It just looks a bit, it looks a bit tired, which it would be because it's 110 years old. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's been great pictures of it around on um, the, the local press, etc. We took some lovely pictures of it. Do we know much about who uh, Jane Hannah MacDonald was? Uh, yeah, we, we put, yes, a little bit of information on Yes, she was a very wealthy lady um, from the Brighton area, and she commissioned six of these lifeboats hmm. um, at the cost of like uh, £931, found out. Good grief. Um, which is quite, quite a lot of money for 1909. Yeah, crumbs, yeah. Um, and it was built in uh, the Thames Ironworks in, in Blackwall. Um, and then she gave six of them away, literally away to around wow. different locations around the country. Yeah. Just as long as they had her name on it, the way, the way they went. That is beautiful, isn't it? That's such a lovely thing to do. I like that. Really? I like that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, Rob, uh, unfortunately, time has run away with us. No problem. Um, but well done for doing that. That is just brilliant. And I'm so impressed that somebody actually managed to find the thing. That's great. Oh, he, he knows about this boat inside and out, this, uh, John, this to you. He's, he's very clever on it. I don't know. He, he can write a book on it. He probably will write a book on it, I, I think. Oh, brilliant stuff. Done, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. I'm pretty sure you're gonna, you've got some maintenance to do somewhere. Um, so um, we'll speak to you again, and we'll find out um, a little bit more about the boat. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, thanks for coming. All right, bud. Take care. Hi.